Hello and welcome to the Empower Couples Podcast, where here you get modern, non-boring relationship advice for you and your partner to communicate like pros, fight smarter, and stay on the same team no matter the challenge that you face. I am one of your hosts, Aaron Freeman. And I'm Jocelyn Freeman, but you all just know us as the Freemans. And this episode is about permission-based communication, respecting each other's boundaries, and bringing up conversations without backlash. And if you're hearing this episode, it means Baby Freeman is here. Oh, wow. We decided, because we love you all so much, that we wanted to make sure we pre-recorded some episodes to make sure there is content while we're off and snuggling with our newborn. And so, yay, she's here. And we have another gift for you. Yes, Baby Freeman said, give them a special gift. (laughs) Give them a gift while you're off with me, is what she said. So we actually recorded a web class for you all content that really addresses the biggest pain points we see with couples related to conflict, which of course is related to communication. They're like brother and sister conflict and communication. And those challenges being that things don't really get repaired and you're disconnected for longer than you'd like after arguments, or you have the same conflicts come up over and over. Or another one is, Seemingly simple conversations tend to escalate into a bigger conflict, which is frustrating. So the whole web class is on conflict repair and tools that will also help prevent unnecessary arguments as well. So go register for this gift at onlinecouplesworkshops.com slash repair. And the slash repair is important so that you specifically get this web class. So excited for you guys to enjoy that while we're snuggling with baby Freeman. And actually, when I think about this topic here for today, permission-based communication, we don't have it in the web class, but it actually is something that helps to prevent simple conversations turning into a disagreement or a conflict. So let's talk, let's talk about this, Jocelyn. What if we weren't doing permission-based conversation and communication, which you might call permissionless, what would that sound like and what would be happening? Yeah, I like how you said permissionless, right? It's missing (laughs) permission. And we will tell you what permission-based communication is, but first we have to talk about the opposite of what permission-based communication is. And I'd like to say it is bringing up topics when you feel like talking about them. You're not necessarily thinking about whether your partner is in the space to talk about it, if they're open to it right then, or even thinking through the best way to approach it. In other words, I think it's not really respecting boundaries. And even though they are your partner and you might have kids with them and you share a home and finances, we still have to respect each other's boundaries and each other's time and really checking that it is the right time for them to discuss something, which is kind of giving away the permission Mm -hmm. based. How else would you describe permission less? Well, I was just thinking about boundaries and I think boundaries are an interesting term in relationships. When I think of it, I immediately think of physical boundaries Mm -hmm. because that's actually what defines the physical world from the non-physical world is that there is a set of boundaries. That's what creates like a me human body versus you over there is my boundary ends somewhere and yours begins somewhere else. So I always think of the physical, but in this context, boundary is really about emotional boundary. There's a lot of talk about mental and emotional capacity and overload. Mm. So this type of boundary really crosses that usually unknown capacity or limit of your partner from a mental and emotional capacity. That's so true. And when we aren't taking that into account, exactly what you said, like their mental and emotional capacity, it's likely... If you just kind of blindside them with a topic, we use the term blindside, right? Because it almost is like it's coming out of nowhere and they're caught off guard. It can lead to the defensiveness. It can lead to the guard going up or the conversation definitely going down a path that it didn't have to go down just because you didn't start with the right intent. Mm -hmm. You kind of like started off with like, well, I want to talk about this now. It's on my mind. I'm frustrated about it or I need to discuss it. You just came at me with some energy right there. (laughs) And well, the interesting thing I think about this is it doesn't even necessarily need to have any charge behind it. Mm. So I know you were giving the example, which it usually is like that. But I thought to myself, even for me, you and you say this to me, I wouldn't say often, but from time to time, when we get into 
some little tension, you'll say, well, I even said it in, in a calm manner. Mm. You know, you, you've even said that to me. Like, I wasn't upset. I wasn't charged about it. And here I still got defensive or like put you off kind of. Mm-hmm. And the real reason is because I felt like a boundary is sort of crossed as in my permission was not given for this conversation to be had. Interesting. And I think about this for men. I mean, that's really the only the perspective I can kind of think from, right? And a lot of times we can, uh, I'm doing air quotes, engage in a conversation while in our own mind and following our body think, I don't want to be hearing this right now. Mm. Why am I listening to this? Or I wish I was doing something else. But we even have to take on to ourselves, we're probably going too far here, is that I need to be clear when I'm giving permission. Yes. I can't just enter in into a conversation immediately with my attitude and my thoughts being, I don't want to hear any of this. Yeah. Because you're, you're just going to set yourself up for the other feeling like you weren't present, like you weren't listening, you were thinking about something else. They don't feel prioritized. Mm-hmm. So once again, this is an aspect of having a permissionless communication. So that's what it sounds like when you have permissionless communication and you're not honoring their boundaries and you're not being as intentional about when and how you bring things up, which sets you down the path of definitely a less likely to be constructive conversation. Yeah, I want to ask you a question really quick. Yeah. It, because isn't a part of this that you don't necessarily know you're crossing a boundary? I just thought of that as you were saying this. Because hmm. you said... It crosses their boundary, but is that assumed? Is that like expected? Because there are different times where you might be able to just kind of randomly bring up a conversation you've wanted to have, and it doesn't necessarily cause like an upset, defensiveness, backlash, and then sometimes it does. Mm -hmm. So it almost seems like this very kind of subjective, moving target as to what this emotional or mental capacity boundary actually is well and that's exactly what permission-based communication is about which is not making an assumption okay you know not just assuming that because they're in the kitchen with you they're ready to just hear whatever you have to say Mm. and actually i'll share this quick example which will be a great transition to what it actually looks like we were on a session last week and it was very interesting because the male partner was you know, really, he was like, I I have a positive intent. I'm trying to just share feedback that I feel is constructive. And I have this belief that my partner should be open to hearing it at any time. Hmm. And so he didn't realize that he was kind of crossing a boundary sometimes, which led to defensiveness and led down a path that they didn't want to go. And so when we talked to him about getting permission, which will give you some prompts of what that can sound like, it really clicked for him. And he's like, I really get it. I wasn't respecting Hmm. whether she was open to it then or not. I just thought if she's in the room with me, you know, we're in the kitchen doing something (laughs) or we're in the bedroom and we're, you know, around each other, I should just be able to say it whenever. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I think, a good example of, yes, the boundary may be this kind of movable target, depending on the time, the circumstances, That's why permission-based communication is so important because it's checking in. Mm -hmm. So should we get into that? Yeah, good transition. Yeah, permission-based communication is checking that your partner is open and ready to discuss something. Are they available? emotionally, mentally, energetically, like (laughs) their, you know, their time and are they prepared for the conversation? So this could apply when you either want to share feedback with them or it could apply if you want to discuss something that you'd like to work on in the relationship or asking them to do something. Yes, this even applies if you're wanting them to do something for you around the house or run an errand, you might see them, you know, sitting there and just be like, well, I should just be able to say it to them. Hey, can you go do this? Well, they might be taking a break and they might, you know, be trying to process their day and and transition from work. And here you come in just (laughs) thinking like, I can just say this. I can just ask them to do this right now. They might be sitting there staring in the space. It looks like they're not doing anything, but they're meditating as a transition (laughs) from a stressful work day trying to get back into the personal life. And it also could apply if you want to just share your feelings on a certain topic. Again, I know it might sound a little bit 
kind of odd. Yeah, I was even thinking like some might say unnecessary. But the thing is, even if you, again, have children together, share, find all these things that you feel like are really intimate and almost like warrant you like, no, no, I should be able to bring up anything, anytime, whenever. I just don't think that that's really fair in terms of honoring that. Yes, they're your partner. And yes, you share a lot in terms of your home, your household, everything. There's still a being. There's still a separate entity or soul that you want to respect and Mm. honor even if you're like, but I should be able to bring, no, we can't just should, you know, and cross our partner's boundaries and just assume I should be able to say it whenever, just because they're my partner. Mm -hmm. So they are a being and you want to respect that. Aaron, anything else you would say to describe it before we give some prompts? Like when you think about permission-based communication in our relationship, how do you think this has made a difference for us? Because I know I can think back to the years we really started to implement this. Mm-hmm. And I think we could do it better still. <laughs> <laughs> we do it. And we, do we forget sometimes? Of mm-hmm. course, sometimes. Yeah, we're not perfect. I'm just glad this. that we are bringing this up because I really get the importance of it and how it keeps conversations. I mean, not just like flowing, but we're having the right conversation at the right time. And even in the moments, I will say this, when I've given my permission and I still have the thoughts like, oh, like I shouldn't have said anything or I'd rather be doing something else. So it's the same thought. But when I have said yes out loud, then I know I've made the decision. It's on me rather than the reverse is I am sort of victim to this conversation or this happening and it just puts you more in a passive backseat driver Mm -hmm. (laughs) type of position and you've probably had that experience in many different areas of your life when you said yes to something there is to me almost this energy that pulls you in like i've said a yes and that almost removes any of your barriers and boundaries to the conversation Mm. like oh i've I've said yes so i'm in this yes Mm -hmm. i love that you bring that up and another thing it made me think is permission-based communication can help also for the person who wants to bring it up in terms of you know sometimes the dialogue could be like well i don't want to bring this up because in the past it's created arguments or my partner's been defensive and so then people you know, stop asserting themselves and stop bringing it up until it, all the tension builds to the point where they kind of say it in an explosion, hence starting right, right. a lot of arguments. And so this helps because instead of it being an all or nothing, like, well, it was a source of an argument in the past or my partner was defensive, so I can't bring that thing up anymore. Or I can never bring up anything after work, you know, kind of creating as if you can't bring things up. It's like, no, just check in. Mm-hmm. Just check in that it is a good time. Or, And I think the key thing about permission-based communication, and this goes along with what you said, Aaron, is it gives them the opportunity to truly choose the conversation right, right. and say yes. I almost like to think of it visually as you're inviting them to walk through a door with you. Oh, that's a good visual. It's like, hey, do you want to come in this room with me? We're both <laughs> intentionally choosing to be in this room as opposed to, dragging them through the door and you know they're not ready to go in the room Uh, it's like hey i'm inviting you to come through this doorway with me and how this could sound is you could just start simply with hey i would love to discuss and then fill in the blank could be something around your finances your kids weekend plans your intimacy just a conversation you had with a friend something that's on your heart something that happened outside the home, like anything, fill in the blank, is now a good time for you. So simple makes such a difference. Because again, you might even use that and they just finished working and maybe they're not in the mental space. Maybe they need a few minutes to transition or maybe they're really tired and it would be better tomorrow. So it could sound like that. Or another way would be, hey, I'd love to share something I've observed in how we're handling blank our kids, the chores. Are you open to hearing my thoughts right now? That one's especially important if you're kind of wanting to give them feedback Mm. or 
kind of a request you have about changing something in the way that they're either doing it or you both are doing it. Yeah, it's good. So it, I think that's a really key one. And then a third way would be, hey, I have some different emotions coming up for me about, and it doesn't even have to be about your relationship. It could be work. It could be your relationship. It could be the kids. But then you could say, are you in a space to listen over dinner? Mm. One of the things I noticed just about that last one is it puts a particular time on it. The other ones were, do you have time, which was more in the moment. That one was setting up the conversation for like a future time. Now, I do want to say something really quick about, well, it's how the partner responds. But I guess since you, the one listening, you're the one that is asking for the permission. The sort of bonus here is if your partner was asking you permission, in either case, you don't want the answer to be no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not open now. And then the partner's no, like, oh, man. Yeah, that's it. So going back to the first one, I would love to discuss how we're handling our discipline of our children or I'd love to discuss the frequency of our intimacy. Is now a good time for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> then the other partner is like, No, Great. by itself is not an answer. Uh-huh. You have to say no, but then say when a good time might be. I love that so much. Yeah, it's like, hey, I'm not in the space for that right now. Could we tomorrow over coffee? Or how about this weekend? Let's sit down and have an intentional conversation. So I love that. because, And it's almost like you said no, but also I love the phrase yes and. Yeah. So you could actually say yes, we could discuss that and this weekend would be better. Yes, and now is not the best time. Let's do that this weekend. Exactly. So you can either say no, but then offer an alternate <laughs> or even better say, yes, I'd love to discuss that. And here's the ideal time. <laughs> I could see some partners... They'll try to squeak in there. So when you say yes, then they'll be like, no, go. <laughs> it's not a race. Like, yes. Oh, and I'm so great. Well, but now's not the best time. Right. Okay. So the two main goals with permission-based communication is number one, that you're taking into consideration when and how you bring things up. So it really is being more intentional and thoughtful about your approach as opposed to just kind of bursting with things or kind of bringing them up when maybe you haven't considered if it is the best time or how you're going to start it. And then the second goal with permission-based communication is that you're demonstrating that you respect them and you're considerate that you're checking that they're a yes to the conversation. So it is a respect thing. It's honoring them. It's their boundaries and making sure that they are also bought into that conversation in the moment. And when you are focused on this, as simple as this can be, it can and will help prevent some of those seemingly, you know, simple or what could be a constructive conversation from escalating into something bigger. Mm -hmm. If the partner truly does mean their yes, because you can't be a yes, but then get defensive about what they say or get annoyed. So it's about both of you being intentional to requesting the conversation, the other person saying yes to it. And then saying, okay, let's have an open conversation. We're both a yes to this right now. Hmm. So we hope you enjoyed this. Oh, I have one more thing, actually. All right, go ahead. I've been over here thinking about the other partner. This will have to be another topic, I think, another episode. But I just want you, the listener, to see if this has happened for you at all. When If your partner has tried to ask about a conversation and you say no, like let's do that next week or in a couple of weeks. I just want you to check out if you're kind of avoiding that or not. Mm -hmm. Like to me, you should be able to have any conversation. I mean, within a couple of days, sometimes I don't understand like next week. Like it's, it's pretty far out. (laughs) Unless you, for some reason have like travel or like a huge project that you're having to finish. So that I just want to put that out there. And the other thing is if you honestly have been telling your partner, like no, and you keep on saying no to a particular topic, right? It's to really look at why you said, why are you so closed off Mm. to that subject, to that topic? So you can't continuously be a no and, hey, I don't know exactly what time, but we'll do that in the future. 
But you can't keep saying that. Yeah. Or you can't keep putting off your partner's ability to express and be understood. That's so true. So I just wanted to put that out there. Maybe a whole other episode, but just something to think about and maybe challenge some of you. If you notice that you've been saying just no to your partner on a topic frequently. Yeah, that's huge. Thank you for that. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's episode about permission-based communication, respecting their boundaries, bringing things up without backlash. And we'll be snuggling with our baby here when you're hearing this episode. And make sure that you watch the web class we recorded for you all. We really would love to know how you're enjoying that. So even though we're off, send us a DM because we'll pop in once in a while and check that. Go to onlinecouplesworkshops.com slash repair. And this is a free web class. This is a gift for you all, which is really going to benefit the way that you repair from conflicts and even just communicate more effectively in those tense conversations. So we love you all and we'll talk to you on the next episode.